Hey, what's up guys, it's Andrew with SEAL. So this is a video about stereoscopic parallax, but it's really a video about bezel dial alignment. So over the past couple days, we've been talking about bezel dial alignment with a couple customers um, and real or perceived issues with alignment. And so we kind of did a deep dive into our process for aligning the bezel insert and the dial. And then did some focus grouping to sort of understand how people were seeing real errors uh, or perceiving errors in that alignment and then trying to kind of quantify that uh, to develop a better design and a better process to eliminate that perception of error. So um, let me show you guys a couple different elements that are involved here um, in this discussion and then uh, I'll show you guys what we did with the actual test. All right guys, so let's get into this. So what we're talking about are two elements that are separated by a distance, right? So we have the noon marker on the dial, which is mounted on this lower blue surface here, that is the dial surface. And then we have the bezel zero marker or index or pip, uh, and that is at this upper blue surface here. And those are separated by 0.32, approximately three, thousandths of an inch. There's 323 thousandths of an inch. And let me just visualize that for you. That's 323 thousandths of an inch, okay? Now, most of that space on our watch is filled with this piece of sapphire crystal. Uh, it's about six millimeters thick. Visual issue uh, came up because when we look at a watch like this one, and we say, is this insert marker aligned with the dial marker and you say no it's not right well you can see that position changes because of perspective because they are separated by a distance right when we look at it from the side you can see that 323 thousandths of an inch separation and so if i move it this direction obviously the you know upper triangle shifts to the right of the lower triangle when we move it this way, the upper triangle moves to the left of the lower triangle. But there's actually a second factor in this, and that is stereoscopic parallax. We do a lot of our assembly under a binocular microscope. We actually have like six of them in the workshop here. Just like your head has two lenses, the binocular microscope does as well. It obviously has two eyepieces, but it actually has two lenses down here as well. So this binocular microscope has a stereoscopic parallax issue. So how do we assemble a bezel insert? This bezel is designed to rotate. It's a unidirectional rotation. There are locking pistons that prevent counter rotation. So we index it all the way around to the zero position. And then we have to counter rotate it just to make sure it's, it's basically backed against those stops because that is essentially the, the reference point, right, for zero. And then being careful not to bump that uh, bezel as we're doing this alignment, then we start that alignment process. So I'm using this case as an example. Obviously, there's no movement in here, but typically the movement, the dial, would already be assembled in the case, and then we take a insert like this. So we kind of align it by eye, and then we check in the microscope looking straight down, and we get it aligned as closely as we can so that those two triangles are aligned. But it is impossible to verify that alignment either by eye or with the binocular microscope because of stereoscopic parallax. Okay, so let me try to explain stereoscopic parallax as simply as I can. Basically, if you're staring at a single point in the distance and you have two lenses that are separated this way, like your eyes are, you're looking from two different angles at that singular point. And because one of your lenses is more dominant than the other, that image effectively shifts slightly, and that's the parallax. Well, now, if you add a vertical separation between two points, right, such as we have between the noon marker and the zero on the bezel, and then you function in this stereoscopic parallax, you essentially have this going on in your brain. Another thing people note about our designs is that unlike most watches that have the noon marker triangle facing down, ours actually points up. So the zero index on the bezel insert and the noon marker on the dial are actually two triangles pointing at each other. 
And that makes it a lot harder, right? The alignment here is obviously critical because it provides a much better reference point for your eye if these two things are not aligned, two points. Whereas if we rotated this 180 degrees and you have this triangle pointing at the backside of this one, particularly if this notch wasn't here, uh, you know, you kind of have this broad reference uh, plane and there's no real reference point uh, especially when you're, you know, rotating the watch like this and you have perspective issues, um, there's less of a reference point on that alignment. So we eliminate those factors and actually figure out is the bezel actually aligned with the dial or not. We use an optical comparator because it only has one lens, so there is no parallax error in the measurement that it takes. So let me show you how we do that. Basically, we put the watch here, and this single lens here is looking at the front of the watch. It projects an image of the watch here, and I'll show you the pictures from that. Uh, and then we're able to take measurements on this system here to a 10,000th of an inch and actually look at that alignment. So let me show you what we found. I didn't actually shoot video of us taking this measurement because I wasn't expecting to make the video at the time. Um, so this is the noon marker on the dial. And you can see this very fine line projected, basically bisecting this triangle. It goes right through the center. When we move down, we can see this is the zero index on the bezel insert. And you can see that that same fine line, it's a, it's a single image, it's just we're in two different parts here, of the image is just slightly offset uh, from the center. This is a picture I took of me taking the actual measurement. You can see the dial here. Uh, that's the measurement. 0 0.0022, we can round off the two tenths. So we're basically talking about two thousandths of an inch. Kind of better understand exactly what was going on here. We took a picture of this watch at this type of an angle, which is a pretty typical angle that you might see on Instagram or like somebody's post on Facebook or on a forum. And then we asked our informal focus group to tell us if that bezel insert was aligned with that dial. 100% of them said no, they are not aligned. So we know that our standard assembly process resulted in a 2,000th of an inch error. I was kind of curious to know uh, in terms of the industry how that stacked. So, so I actually measured another watch in a similar price point to ours. I'm not gonna mention the brand name because we don't do that. Um, but their watch had a, uh, it was 0 .0063 error. So it was basically three times the error of ours. Uh, but the people in our focus group said that theirs looked more aligned than ours. And I think the reason for that is their noon marker points down. So the bezel triangle is pointing at the back side, the flat side of the noon marker triangle. And because it's such a big flat surface, you have kind of less visual reference on that alignment. Um, and the effect of perspective is less as well. You know, as you're, as you're moving the watch, right? Like, you know, angling it slightly this way or slightly that way, like we showed in the beginning of the video, where you could see those triangles moving relative to each other. I just, I guess it's the lack of that, like, you know, the two points pointing at each other uh, as a reference point gave the perception that their alignment was better than ours, even though ours was actually three times more accurate. And so the big question obviously is, okay, how do we solve this, right? Because customer satisfaction is a big component of what we do. So does it mean that we try to explain to all these customers like, hey, you know, it's a 2,000th of an inch error and you should just be happy with that because it's pretty good. Um, and I think that's the wrong solution. I think that what we need to do is consider how our dial designs are contributing to a perception of error or magnifying you know, the real error of two thousandths of an inch that we actually have and do some redesign on our dials to help contribute to higher customer satisfaction with the product uh, because it's basically impossible for us without dramatically increasing cost to align the bezel and the dial to better than two thousandths of an inch. As always, thank you for watching, guys. If you have questions, you can comment below. You can email us, info at sealinstrument.com. Follow us on Instagram. It's at sealinstrument, which is S-E-L instrument. And we'll see you guys in the next video. We are working on part two of our dial making video. Um, we're hoping to have that up soon. It's the editing process that's actually taking forever um, because we're still trying to make and ship watches. Obviously, that's our priority. So uh, when we get downtime, we work on the edit. So I'm hoping in the next week or two, we're gonna have that up. So keep looking for that as well. Uh, thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you next time.